the first two topics for chapter three we are going to talk about in class. So this video is simply to be utilized for review if you can't seem to remember um, everything you need to know about qualitative and quantitative and about scientific notation. Okay, so my assumption is that you already know this, but just in case, you can use this video if you need to. So, qualitative and quantitative. It's a way to describe uh, data that you gather. Two different classifications for data you gather in a lab. Qualitative data would be descriptive data, describing qualities of the data, um, rather than quantities, would be qu which would be quantitative. So quantitative are number-based, where qualitative are descriptive of some kind. So for example, if you looked at this red shape on the screen, uh, it could be described as red, and that would be a qualitative process or quality. But if you then said that that red was actually 650 nanometer wave, that's what was creating the wet red light, that would be a quantitative um, value or data point. That rock down there, you could describe it as dense, and that would be a qualitative uh, piece of data. But the fact that its density is 11.35 grams per milliliter, that's quantitative. Okay, that's numeric. Uh, this car could be described as fast, right? It's silver, it's sleek, it's fast. That is qualitative. Uh, but numerically, to say that it's traveling at 205 miles per hour, which is pretty darn fast, that's quantitative. Okay, that's numeric. So in a lab, we're usually getting quantitative numbers, that's what we're going for, but there's a lot of times where qualitative can also be uh, useful. Okay, the fact that there is a reaction, not, necessi not necessarily caring about how much of a reaction. And we actually do an entire lab at the end of the year called a qualitative analysis lab, where we are just simply looking for what is in solution, not how much. Okay, that would be qualitative. Scientific notation. I'm assuming this is something that you are familiar with at this point in your education. If not, here's a very brief review. Okay, If you're given a number that has lots of zeros behind it or that has lots of zeros in front of it, meaning it's a very big number, much bigger than one, or a very small number, much smaller than one, what you're going to do is you're going to take your decimal point and you're going to put it in your number so that you have a one a number between 1 and 9 in front of the decimal. Then you're going to count up how many places that you have moved the decimal point, and that'll be some multiple of 10. If it's a negative multiple of 10, that means that your number that you're representing is smaller than 1. So for example, here we have two numbers on the screen. <clears throat> one of them is this number. Okay. To do this, you would take the decimal point, which is implied at the end here, and you'd put it so that there is a number between 1 and 9 in front, Okay, just a 5, and then you count how many places over that you just moved that decimal point. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Your final answer is 5.201 times 10 to the 6 milliliters. I ran out of room. You keep all of your digits, but I dropped all the zeros, and I represented them in my um, power. Okay. To do the fraction, the one that's less than zero, okay, we've got 0 0.000431. Again, you're going to move the decimal point so you have only a digit between 1 and 9 in front. 4.3. One, and then you're going to count how many places you moved it. One, two, three, four, times ten. This time it's to the negative four because you moved it um, from a number that's less than one. And that's in kilograms, and okay, we want our unit on it. So there'll be more examples of scientific notation if you need them, but that's just a brief review for you.